Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for a new show that um, I did not review last season. And this is technically season 15, but it's the first, second season of the reboot of The Real Housewives in New York. So, Roni. And um, this was a super sized episode. Um, I will be honest, I'm not sure how long I'm going to watch this show. Also, which means I don't know how much longer, how long I'm going to be reviewing this. Because I'll be honest with you, um, I did not love the season premiere. I didn't love it. Um, now, I know we're trying to get to know all these ladies, so there's a lot more to it. But I guess if you compare the other Housewife shows that are going on right now, it just didn't, it, it didn't deliver. I'll just be honest. It didn't deliver, in my opinion. Um, but I am willing to give it a chance. And we do have some newbies on the show. And I just want to, I want to give it one more season to see if it's something I'm going to be reviewing or not. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so we're, a lot of this was catching up on what happened, like after the reunion, and I guess the reason why I feel the way I feel about this premiere is that if anyone who watched Reunion last season, I'll give you just kind of a straight up. It, last season, the first season of this reboot, I will describe it as it was kind of exhausting. Um, the cast trips were not very fun. More conflict than any type of fun or resolution. Not much resolution until the reunions. Until the reunion. And then the reunion was like an apology tour. And it just was very... Um, I don't know. And I think a lot of it has to do with when you watch a lot of these shows in the past. A lot of these women in these shows. And I'm not just talking about just Romney. I'm talking about as a whole the way reality show TV shows were before as they are today is there were built in relationships, built in friendships. And with this particular cast, we know that's not what it was. And we can, and it's, it's kind of obvious. So we're watching these women get, to, get to know each other on camera. And I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. So anyway, where we, where we start off at is we have Uba and Bryn pretty much kind of being separated from each other. And this is after the reunion, but like, um, I think it was around like June, June this year, they filmed the cast, um, you know, montage at the beginning. So the, you know, when you show them like, you know, doing their thing and then the, the thing at the end, um, they were filming that. And basically, after the reunion, them two were still not okay. And I believe for most of the season, we're going to show, we're going to talk about that conflict. But the common denominator, I would say, when it comes to most of this episode, is Bren. Bren's not getting along with like really anyone, and it kind of bothers me because I'm just like, damn, the Indiana girl gotta be the one who does all this, but. Honestly, if it wasn't for her doing this, there would be nothing going on. So it's kind of one of those things. But it just seems like it's kind of like, it's almost like she's being a producer. So I don't really love it for that reason. I don't like when these shows are overly produced. And it's just kind of obvious. Because a lot of the conflict is literally a very gay, it's, it's a petty game of telephone. And so even the things that they're getting upset about, I don't know if I would get Bev as upset as they're getting. And so that's kind of the other reason why I'm just kind of like, okay, let's, let's see how this goes. But it starts off with that. And for those who are not familiar, Brim was one who aired out on national TV um, Uba's situation when it comes to her. Well, now everyone knows that her boyfriend's name is Oliver. But she wasn't really ready to tell anyone anything about that yet. And... Bryn, the only reason why Bryn knew is because Sai told her, but Sai told Bryn in confidence because they were the two that knew each other before the show, and Bryn told the whole world. 
So, although Sai and Uba had issues, Sai apologized right away and kind of owned it. And Brynn, not so much. So there's that. Next, we then see Jessel with, pa with Pavan. And, um, and they're going to Chinatown. And <laughs> so we see, well, before we go to, they go to Chinatown, we see that the twins are still chaotic as I'll get out because they're only two. And they're still just running amok. And so they decide to go to this place called Carol's Bun. But of course, because Pava is the way he is, very eccentric, very, he actually helps make this show, like the husbands on the show, I will say this, I feel like the husbands on the show help bring it, um, especially um, Pava, Abe, and um, yeah, Pava and Abe, them two, so much fun, so much fun. So Pava, though, he... Um, it's like, no, we're going to go to this place. We're going to go out to dinner in Chinatown. And they take the subway. And this is definitely a housewife's first. I don't think I've ever seen any of the women on the housewife show take the subway at all. Like, and no shade. But like, I don't know how. I've, I've never been to New York City before, which is really weird. I know, I know. Don't judge me. Um, but even I'm someone who doesn't really like to ride the L as much anymore. That's Chicago's version of the subway system. The, um, yeah. <laughs> and of course, like Jessel's dressed like high fashion and whatnot, and they're on the subway, but it's so awkward, but it's actually kind of funny. But then they do end up going to Carol's Bun, which was a V, and, and we find out after the whole Viamonese fiasco that happened last season, because um, Cy gave, um, Cy and Aaron gave Jessel and Pavit such a tough time about how Pavit is literally traveling for food. And as someone who also does the same thing, because I ain't gonna hold you, I actually have a vlog, um, seeing things differently. And my recent vlog is literally, for the most part, I literally travel there for food. So I get it. <laughs> but anyway, Ever since he started, ever since he did that, it inspired him to basically become a food, a food influencer. And I find it weird that she's saying food influencer. You mean a, a, a food blogger? That's all he is. But just so you know, she has to add, she has to add her fanciness to it. So there, anyway. So I think a lot of what's going to be happening in the season when it comes to her, um, she talks about how Pavit just isn't very romantic. She didn't receive a Valentine's Day gift for anything recently. And it's really kind of been a thing ever since she's had the kids. Um, they have the kids. And then also they talk about the Emerals being stored um, in um, Beverly Hills. Jessel still wants to have a girl. And Pavit's like, no, I'm done. And <laughs> so I think that's going to be the focus on the storyline when it comes to them. But oh, that's, yeah. Next, we have Aaron and um, Ube. Oh, sorry, Uba. Wow. Ooh, I don't know what Ube is. Uba. <laughs> we have, um, so we have um, Aaron and Uba. And um, we find out that after they had that whole entire conflict last season, which I ain't gonna lie, I feel like it was 20 on 10 when it came to that, they are better than ever. They're describing themselves as peanut butter and jelly. Ever since the season's wrapped up, they've hung out. They've been pretty much inseparable. And then we then meet Becky or Rebecca Aminkoff. She does join them. And um, she's introduced as Aaron's friend. And then Uva is talking about her, her man, Oliver, and talking about how things are going very, very well when it comes to their relationship. And then they're just kind of having the conversation of kids or no kids. So things are moving along pretty quickly. Um, Uba, I ain't gonna lie, she wasn't really on the show that much this episode. Um, hopefully this season she brings it a little bit more because if anything, she brings a fashions. And side note, her confessional look, four plus four, eight. She ate that. Um, so hopefully we see more of that. Um, and then 
the subject of Bryn's, Bryn's party comes up. And so we're like, yeah, let's let's go to Bryn's party. But then we find out that Uba ain't talked to her in forever and neither has Aaron. So um, Aaron isn't really seeing eye to eye with her either. So there's that. Um, also to um, Beck. Becky knows, um, we also find out that Rebecca, also, she calls herself Becky though. Um, she already knows Jenna, she already knows Cy. But yeah, the Bryn thing comes up and then this is part of a dual scene. So then on the other side, we see that Bryn meets Jenna and Jessel to go furniture shopping. And then Bryn shades Jessel in the confessional. She's like, I'm here for Jessel's honesty and Jenna's actual style because Jess was like yeah I'm sure I'm here she's here for my opinion and my style I'm pretty sure she loves my furniture and that's not what it was but and so it comes up that um Bren is not very happy with Aaron and her interview with um Jeff Lewis and Jeff Lewis, because he is part of the Housewives universe or the Bravo universe, he asks the question of where is Bryn's money coming from? And Aaron didn't really answer the question and didn't really shade her about it either. Um, I, think, I think Aaron didn't really do anything wrong in this, but according to Bryn, Bryn is claiming that Aaron called her a, a call girl. And fast forward, I'm going to hold you. They, they played this back twice. She didn't never do that. But we'll get into that later on because she is going to get called out about it again. So that's another thing. And then back over with um, Uba, um, Becky, and Aaron, they're discussing Jenna's... They're, so Jenna had to get together her place and Cy, Jessel, Bryn, and Aaron were there. And Jenna did state to Bryn that, um, well, Jenna stated to Aaron that Bryn said that Aaron called her poor. And Aaron is saying she didn't even say it like that. It was a joke. Because what happened apparently was Jenna visited Aaron at her, pla at her place in the Hamptons. Um, and her car broke down. She has a classic car and it broke down and Aaron ended up getting an Uber for her and Jenna never really paid her back. Not a big deal, but she kind of made a joke about it. And I can see both sides about it because Aaron does have this way of telling things and it probably didn't seem like she was joking, but there's a pattern when it comes to Brent. Just saying. I don't know what side you're on, but as much as I want to be on Bryn's side, I am side-eyeing Bryn because just from last season and then a little bit of this this first episode, it, it's, it's kind of a one-trick pony for me when it comes to this. So anyway. So back on the other side, though, we have Bryn swearing up and down that she did indeed call her poor. And Aaron's like, I would never say anything like that. Which side note, I do believe Aaron to not have said this because if you've been following anything outside the season, I think there was a conversation, correct me if I'm wrong, pretty sure there was a conversation about Aaron's financial issues. So I think she would be the last person to try to highlight someone else's financial issues. And she just doesn't seem like that type of person that brings up finances if anything, there are other there are other cast members that would do that. Um, but I don't see Aaron being one of them. Um, so yeah, it definitely seemed like Bryn is definitely putting some um, stink on the story. Um, anyway. So it's kind of up in the air if Uba's going to go. Uba says she is going to go, but she's just going to get there late. Because Uba, we already saw Uba's not really cool with um, Bryn either. Yeah, so there's a lot of tension. It's all kind of with one person. <laughs> and 
Anyway, next we see Sai and Jessel, and they're together, which is a happy change because we saw, remember last season, Sai and Jessel were bu bumping heads, and it was honestly because Sai was kind of being a mean girl. And it seems like Sai is trying to turn over a new leaf, and the keyword is trying. Because the old her kind of did come out at the end of this episode. But I don't know. I don't really fought her for it all the way. Um, we'll get into that when we get there. But anyway. So. Um, oh. I forgot. So remember how I said earlier on where it comes to. Um, the question about Brynn and where she gets her money from was going to come up. That's how it came up. Like where. How, because. The other issue that I stated last season was a thing is that we never saw Bryn's place. So it was always, we were always questioning like, how come we never see her place? Is she not really who she says she is? And so that's how the Jeff Lewis thing came up to begin with because it was kind of tied to that. So I forgot to, I forgot to tie that together, but that's kind of where all that came from. But anyway. So, but Jessel and um, Cy, they did make up. Cy kind of went on this apology tour. And really ever since the show wrapped up and after she saw herself on TV and after, after the reunion, she actually really did start going to therapy. So, she is trying to work through some of her issues and also to... We do need to be mindful and remember last season when she was kind of being a mean girl and everything, her mom just passed away. And her and her mom did not have the did not have a great relationship. It was very contentious. So I think we're still seeing a combination of the new experience of her being on TV and her grieving. And then everything else that goes with that. So that's and so I am willing to give her another chance because she literally did have some real life stuff going on. And her mom was someone who um, had issues with substances and was also, I think she also has some mental illness issues. So we're going to give her another chance. But anyway, so they decide to go plunging together. And plunging is pretty much kind of like an ice bath situation, but instead it's just cold water with, without the ice, it looks like. But it's like a spa type of deal. I don't know if I would pay for that, though. Well, I lied. I have been plunging before. But I did through a whole entire spa experience. I do want to go back to something like that. Like, I went to, like, a a, ba a, a bathhouse situation where you had that whole entire thing going on. It was very, very nice. You know what? I might treat myself to that for Christmas. Yeah. I think I'm going to do that. But anyway. So... They're good when it comes to their friendship. They plunge for a total of three minutes. And after that, then um, we find out that Sai and Bryn are also not in a good place either. Like, Sai kind of went all the way off on her and tore her a new one. And um, Sai says she apologized, but Bryn didn't receive it. And they even kind of hung out a little bit at Jenna's, but they really didn't talk it through. So... She is going to go to Bryn's event, and hopefully they can clear the air. Next, we're at um, Jenna's apartment, and we meet Nancy, who is her girlfriend's mom. And she's doing her yearly plunge thing. That she, not, not plunge, well, purge that she does. She calls it a purge. I simply call it spring cleaning. Um, but in Jenna Lyons' place, pace, that. Yeah. In Jenna Lyons' case, I cannot speak right now. In Jindalaya's case, it definitely is more of a purge because, you know, the shoe collection is shoe collecting. And I do kind of want to get a closet like that when I move. Clearly not going to be as big as that. But I am um, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, you know what? I'm not going to say it out loud. I'm going to move in silence. But anyway, I do want a closet like that. We'll just say that. So, um... Basically, she's getting rid of her shoes, and um, Nancy's helping her out with that. And then we meet the new housewife. She does show up, too, and her name's Raquel. And um, she's helping her out as well. Raquel does initially accidentally sit in the chair that 
Aaron and Brim broke last season and they show the callback of that. Um, but then we do find out a little bit about Raquel, that she has many jobs. She's an art curator. She's a model. She kind of does a little bit of everything. And then um, we also find out that they know each other and met when they both were in the middle of figuring out that they're both lesbians. But not with each other. It wasn't like that. They both just were just like, oh, we have... We, I have, a, I have a friend who understands what I'm going through. It was one of those situations because both of them were previously married, and so they're figuring all that out. Now Raquel's transition was not as uh, smooth. Her mom wasn't really happy with it to the point where the her and her mom are not in the best space. Um, so her mom moved back to Puerto Rico from New York and hasn't been back. Her mom has met Mel before, who is her fiancé, but she met Mel, her mom met Mel when Mel was just her friend. So Mel and Raquel know each other for years before they became more than friends, and now, of course, that's her fiancé. And they are a cute couple, so. Um, and we will meet Mel later on in this episode, but that's a little bit about Raquel, and so far, I like her style, um, hopefully we get to learn more and, you know, see what's going on. Next, um, we have Abe and Aaron and they're, the, and they're out to get like ice cream with the kids. So Elijah and Levi are there and we find out that they moved to Uptown. Um, they were living in Tribeca and they moved to Uptown. Um, they're closer to the school, um, uh, I guess when it comes to the commuting of it all. And it's probably a little bit more affordable, too. Um, and that's no shade. I think, I think you know, with them having a family, and, and I'm not saying this is shade at all. I want y'all to understand that. As someone who also lives in a major city, and Chicago's a ch way cheaper version of, like, New York than New York will ever be, um, I get it. If you have children, you kind of got to make it work, you know? And so what they're, they love, the, we find out that they love the location, but they don't like the place that they're at because they're just like in a, I think they're just in a regular apartment situation. And so they're looking to get into either a tri-level or a townhouse of some sort. And we know that Aaron's in, in, you know, real estate. So Aaron does have a townhouse in mind that she wants to renovate. And so she's like, hey, Abe, I think you should look at it and we can renovate it and, you know, do we need to do? And then Aaron, some, not Aaron, but Abe somehow mentions like tripping, like shrooms. And Aaron gets really, really mad at Abe, but like all really mad. And I was confused too. I didn't understand what was happening there. And we find out in both their confessions, confessionals, that it wasn't about his comment. There's something else going on with their relationship. Um, but neither of them reveal it yet. And Aaron Strip says, I'm not ready to reveal that yet. But yeah, there's something else going on. So yeah, there's trouble in paradise when it comes to them too. And we're going to find out. And I feel for them because they are, a, they are an attractive couple. Especially Abe. Abe is, Abe's fine. So she did a good job there. But hopefully, hopefully we'll find out. But then the other thing that we found out that's going on with Aaron is that her mom got diagnosed with breast cancer and they thought it was going to be easy, get the cancer out and be done. But it's actually, it turns out the cancer is way more aggressive than they originally thought. And so her mom's on chemo. So Aaron's having a rough time. And so this is going to probably be a pretty rough season for Aaron. But... I don't see Erin being the one who's in a lot of trouble this season like she was last season for putting her foot in her mouth. Um, I think this is definitely going to be Bryn. <laughs> Bryn, if, if this episode didn't put anything else out there, that Bryn is the troublemaker. We kind of already knew that just based off of her mannerisms and how she acted last season. But I think this season she's going to be paying for that. So next, we see some of the girls getting ready for Bryn's event. 
and Raquel, and mainly we see Raquel, we see Raquel at her place, and we meet Mel. And we also get to see her engagement ring. It's very unconventional, but it's very pretty. And then we also find out that Raquel has two kids from her previous marriage with her ex-husband, um, Corey and Elle, boy and girl. And um, and they look like they're like in their pre-teens or teens. Um, because um, we also find out that ballpark-wise, um, Raquel is in menopausal age. Because um, she straight up mentions it towards the end. So I was like, oh, okay. Well, good to know. So I would maybe say, I'm guessing maybe mid-40s. Maybe. Because, I, I mean, depending on your age, it's kind of when that starts, right? Oh, God. <laughs> and the reason why I gave it looks because, like, oh kind of close to that but anyway <laughs> Jeez. um but we do find out also that they have three motorcycles um so they love riding together they are a beautiful looking couple and then we go from there to Bren's event and it's they're doing the event at a rooftop lounge and Bren and her brother Darius are there to show they show up first and then Jenna shows up I did not love what Jenna was wearing. When Bryn described what she was wearing, I, I kind of agree. They said that she looks like a vagina with like a a tampon. <laughs> and I don't really disagree. But anyway. Um, and then Sai shows up. Sorry, I lost my spot. Sai shows up. And then um, Bryn is open. As Shy is, as Cy shows up, she does. Bryn states in her confessional she is open in, open to patching things up with Cy because her and Cy were very very close before the show, and I don't know. And <laughs> um, from there though, we see that Aaron shows up next, and then we see Jessel and uh, Pavin shows up, and then um, Becky shows up next. And then Jessel, and so after that, then Jessel and Bryn go to get a drink together. And Jessel shows Aaron the text that Aaron sent to her. And Aaron apparently sent a text saying, I'm very disappointed in you. And that kind of tells you a little bit of what is to come. Because it's pretty clear that Jenna told Aaron what was said at the furniture store about um, the poor comment. Um, again, I guess this is kind of the reason why I'm like, <sighs> I just wish their conflict was not over something this petty like this. A lot of their conflict so far has been based off of some semantics and it's kind of annoying. Okay, sorry about that. For those who have those who are new to the channel, it's fall, and the fall means allergy problems. Spring also means allergy problems. The only time I don't have allergy problems is the summer months, and it has to be summer, summer, like no rain or anything like that, and the winter. So if you're new here, welcome. Apologies, but that's what, if you call anything, and if you hear me sniffling, that's what's going on. Anyway. Back to what we we're talking about. So, um, and then Jessel does give the correct guess that she does think it's related to the furniture store and what happened there. But then from there, we see that Raquel and Mel, they arrive next. And then Abe, because Abe, I guess, had something else going on where he couldn't arrive with Aaron, but he does show up. And then Cy, um, does not waste any time and gets right into it with, and not into it. She 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 gets right to the things with um, Jenna and like asked her like, hey. So I was told because oh by the way in the scene with um Jessel and Sai, Sai did bring up how she feels away. She she doesn't know how, but somehow got turned around or. Jenna thinks that Sai hates her and use that those exact wordings to her 
And Sai did not say that. Now what Sai said was that I can't stand her. See what I mean? The semantics. But she said she doesn't hate her and that's not what she said. But um, anyway, Sai's upset about it because she does ask Jenna who said that to her. And Jenna <laughs> didn't miss no words or, anything, or nothing. She was like, um, Bren. She's like, Brenda. <laughs> and this is what I love Jenna for. Jenna is just such a straight shooter. She doesn't really want to be in the drama at all. She just runs and tells who told her what and keeps it. And she does like this. I got nothing to do with it, but this is what was said to me. So I think you have, I thought you have a problem with me because that's what was said to me. And, um, Sai is clearly upset. She's like, oh my God. I thought me and Brynn were going to clear things up. And now I'm back upset to where I was at before. I don't want to clear nothing up with her. And so Sai goes to Jenna right away. Owns it. She's like, okay. But she owns it after she talks to Jessel. Cause, and Jessel's like, yeah, this is exactly what you said. She's like, oh, okay. Because it was via text. So like the receipts were receipting. I was there. And so Sai's like, okay. Yeah, I did say that. That that does sound like me. And so she owns it. And she's like, I'm sorry. I said all that before I really knew you. You know, I had this preconceived notion about who you were before I really got to know you. And they patched up. They're good. You know. And I wrote in a question mark. I feel like this is supposed to be Sai's redemption season. And so far, it could be. It could be. Because even how she got upset later on in this episode, later on the scene, I don't blame her. So it could be. It could be her redemption season. But it's di she's definitely on an apology tour. She definitely is. Um, anyway. So then Raquel and Mel, they talked to Becky about how they got together. And <laughs> Raquel did allude to this when Jen and her were talking about it. It's a mess. It's a messy lesbian stuff. It's messy. And it's lesbian as hell. So Mel, her fiance, has never been with a man. And so there is some overlap. When it came to Mel's old relationship and her current relationship with Raquel. And it's some lesbian stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to say that because I mean, honestly, that's one of the things that scare me away from going all in on the lady ponds because the relationships sometimes can be messy as all get out. They're more, to me, in my opinion, they're a lot more messier than heterosexual relationships, but for in a different way. I don't think I'm prepared for it. So I just like, you know what? We're just going to not date at all. <laughs> That's where we're at with it. But anyway, um, so then... Um, Abe goes and bartends for a second. It's kind of cute. And he accidentally makes a cherry martini instead of a dirty martini because he mistake the martini cherries with um, black olives. And they were not black olives. They were cherries. And that was kind of funny. And then from there, Aaron and Jessel kind of get into it. And um, because Aaron's like, you're being mean to me. And she's basically calling out the fun for story situation. Um, Aaron is to Jessel and Jessel's like, well, what did I say? And Aaron's like, well, you must have, I mean, you, did you agree? You must have agreed with what Bren said about me calling her a liar. And she's like, no, I didn't say it like that. And then she's like, well, how, how did you think, how did, where did that come from? And then Jenna was sitting right there. was like, and Jenna and her confessional, she killed me. She's like, I just want to look like a vagina and have fun. I do not want to be part of this conflict. She's like, and, and she also states her confessional. Uh, no, no, she states to them in person, like, I told you right away what was said. 
to give you a heads up because I didn't want to be part of the drama. But I just wanted to let you know this was all said. And I don't have any hard feelings towards you. You and I are still cool, but this is what was said. And I believe, I believe Jenna. I think Jenna ain't taking none of this seriously. So she's like, okay, this is what was said. Got it. Good. Great. And so from there, um, we have, um, so Aaron's still talking about it. She's still upset. And I know, side note, I forgot to mention this, but there was this moment, um, that basically Jessel said that she doesn't remember exactly what she said, but she knows that she didn't say that um, she agreed with the fact that Bryn said that um, Aaron stated that um, Jenna's broke. And um, Jessel and her confessional cracked me up. She was like, you know what? I just always blame it on um, mommy brain. And then I get out of it because like, Jessel clearly wants no part of this conflict, and, um, yeah. Um, so as she's trying to clear things up and find out exactly what was said, Bryn tries to join the group, and as soon as she goes to try to join the group, Aaron gets up. She's like, I am not doing with you this with you. I have integrity. I don't lie. This is not what I said. And Jessel just confirmed it for me. And I was like, well played, Aaron. Well played. So if you didn't catch a play, what Aaron did was she did that text on purpose so that it would cause Jessel to basically tell on Bren without it coming off a certain way because Aaron accused Brit of Jessel of spreading the lie with Bren. And as a result, Jess was like, I didn't say that. And kind of basically spilled the tea without it, without it coming off like Jessel was at fault. She basically made it where Jessel wouldn't be at fault at what she said. I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, Aaron, I caught what you did right there. That was good. That was good. Um, and so Aaron walks away. And then immediately Aaron goes back to sit down. Because this is, I think it was after the commercial. So she goes back to sit down. And then Bren, because Bren, one thing about Bren is she does not take accountability. She didn't take accountability at all last season. I don't remember her ever doing it. I don't remember her apologizing at all. She... No. So Bren throws in, instead of like saying what was said there, she deflects and throws the um, Jeff Lewis podcast in her face about, and says that like, you know, Aaron, Aaron accused her of being like a, a call girl or, do, do, you know, doing stuff for guys for money or being a sugar baby and then before everyone, before anything else happens in the confessionals, you see Sai's like, what's wrong with that? I was a sugar baby for a while. There's nothing wrong with that. And then Jess was like, I would love to be someone's sugar baby. Honestly, if I wasn't married with kids, I would do that immediately. And then even Aaron jokes like, what's wrong with being that? <laughs> and you know what? I kind of agree with all of them. <laughs> kidding. Kidding. You, those who, who follow me for a minute and know me, no, I can't, couldn't do it. Um, but anyway. Um, but then Sai does call her out immediately. She's like, girl, that's not what was said in that podcast. And the producers, as I mentioned before, the producers sh show the footage again. Aaron didn't do anything wrong. Like, at all. It was mainly Jeff Lewis alluding to it, but then Jeff Lewis still didn't even allude as badly as what um, Bren said. Bren, Bren was given projection. I don't know what that was about, the, but girl. And so then as Sai calls her out, um, Bren tries to deflect again and tries to call out Sai for her behavior. Um, 
size behavior with Jessel. And Sai's like, me and Jessel are good. We already talked about this and we're in a good place. And now you're trying to break us up again. And so the narrative that both Sai and Aaron are kind of just displaying, but it kind of shows like this on the TV too, is that Bryn doesn't like everyone to get along. She likes the conflict. And I'm not going to hold you. It's kind of looking like that to me. And so, um, but Sai is like, I'm not doing this with you. Not today, say, not today, say. So she storms off. Um, after she kind of calls, calls basically Bryn out on her BS and just very straight chaser, no shooter. Just like, hey, you're on that BS again. I ain't with it. I'm out. And so she goes to sit down next to Raquel, Mel, and Becky and fills them in. Everything is going on. Raquel's intrigued, but she's like, I don't really hang out with a lot of straight girls often. And this is interesting. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Um, and then Bryn goes and cries because she couldn't handle everyone just kind of getting on her. Um, it really wasn't any, it wasn't everyone. It was really just Bryn and Cy. I, I mean, it really was just Aaron and Cy. Really, once Cy stepped in, Aaron backed off. So it was really just, Bryn, Bryn cannot go one-on-one -on -one with Cy. And we saw that in the reunion. She, she ain't got it. She don't have it. And in the confessional, though, we find out that Cy's disappointed in her behavior because she's like, I, I had all this progress. I was trying to be zen. And I already went backwards right then and there. And she's like, so, and you can tell Cy actually feels a way that she went backwards. She's like, it took literally one time to make the, and this girl made me go backwards. Like, I went backwards right then and there. And I, and Cy, I don't think you went backwards. I think you're owning your feelings. And because what's, I, apparently, according to Bryn, what Cy said was very hurtful. Me? Okay. I'm just about to call a thing a thing. I feel like all these women on this show, at least this first episode, y'all are giving way too sensitive. <laughs> None, no one on the show has said anything that offensive to me, in my opinion, at all. And Brim was like, and Brim was like all upset that like this was all in public. And I'm just kind of like, I don't know. Like if you, you know, if you are going to be the stir, you gotta be able to deal with it. You gotta be able to, you gotta be able to deal with all the things that come with being a pastor. So that does include getting called out in your, like in public for it. And if you can't handle that, then maybe you should stop stirring the pot. I mean, maybe, maybe that's why I'm just like, yeah, this is, y'all are sensitive, way too sensitive. Anyway, um, but Bryn goes to talk to her brother and they go outside and I don't know if they leave, but it, it, it's insinuated that they left. And as this is happening, Uba finally shows up because everyone was there but Uba. And that's how the episode ends because everyone was like, because Uba was like, where is Bryn? Oh, she left. And that was a supersized episode of Roni. And I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I just really want them to get into their actual stories and kind of leave some of this pettiness alone because a lot of the pettiness is really dumb to me. Like, I don't care. And I'm going to need... Some of the women to, um, I don't know. Like, I guess what what's getting me is this is New York. <laughs> and all the other, all your other favorite franchises have said meaner, harsher things and not run away. Anyway, um, yeah. That does conclude the episode. Let me know what you think of it. I am going to give it a chance, even though this was not, I guess maybe I had high expectations because it's Roni and maybe I shouldn't have. And 
I mean, I, I watched all last season and I, I liked it enough, but like, I don't know. Um, we'll see. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of content. Um, let me know what you thought about the episode. Again, thank you for watching the video. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.